When we hear the word methane, we often think of natural gas, which heats homes, propels cars, and helps fuel fires for cooking. A small number of people will also remember that there are entire rivers of this substance in the universe, and that huge reserves of methane in the form of crystals can be found at the bottom of our oceans. But did you know that this hydrocarbon can send us to distant stars and bring us to a new level of development? You are on the Innovative Text Channel. Right now, we'll show you how methane will transform humanity into a multi-planetary species and transform SpaceX into a space giant. It's no secret that the era of space exploration began with the advent of long-range ballistic missiles. Back in 1944, the so-called Weapon of Retaliation a project of the German designer Werner von Braun called Vergeltungswaffe II made the first ever suborbital spaceflight. Although this rocket was used by the Wehrmacht as a combat unit of mass destruction, it was that who gave rise to the full-scale exploration of near space. After the war, von Braun became one of the key figures in American rocketry. The legendary Saturn V launch vehicle created by him delivered the first astronauts to the moon and allowed the United States to win the space race, leaving the USSR behind. The heart of the largest and most powerful rocket ever built by mankind was the F-1 liquid-fueled engine. To this day, this monster is considered the most powerful single-chamber rocket engine, liquid rocket engine. For two decades, it held the lead among all rocket engines, until the world saw the Soviet monster RD-170. Since then, a huge number of various engines have been constructed, and their design has been constantly improved. Modern liquid rocket engines use a two-component mixture as fuel. This consists of a fuel and an oxidizer in a liquid state. Over the past 80 years, the composition of rocket fuel has changed numerous times. Engineers created a wide variety of liquid rocket engines using components, such as nitrogen tetroxide unsymmetrical dimethylhydrazine, fluorine, hydrogen, nitric acid, and kerosene. For a long time, oxygen plus kerosene fuel vapor was considered the best option. These are the components used by the workhorse Merlin, a liquid rocket engine created by SpaceX engineers. Nine such liquid propellant rocket engines launched the reusable Falcon 9 vehicle into space as well as the 27 mentioned vehicles lift the company's super heavy development, Falcon Heavy, into the sky. A long history of development and vast experience in the use of liquid propellant rocket engines made them the best options for launch vehicles and maneuvering engines for spacecraft. However, they also have obvious disadvantages. Some of these include the problem of the fuel vapor that occupies one of the central positions. Many types of rocket fuel are comprised of highly toxic substances. The use of some components causes enormous damage to the environment. Moreover, the extraction of most types of fuel is possible only on Earth, which seriously complicates the refueling of rockets or spacecraft outside our planet. Therefore, engineers and scientists never stop looking for substances that would become a universal fuel pair. In 2009, SpaceX first mentioned the Raptor rocket engine project, which will become the heart of the Starship interplanetary transport system. This is a closed-type rocket engine with full gasification of fuel components. Liquid oxygen and methane are used as its constituents. The engine is based on a unique design, and the aforementioned fuel vapor has never been used in rocket science before. Paradoxically, in 2009, only a few realized how far-sighted Elon Musk's decision to use oxygen and methane was. In addition to the obvious advantages, such as the absence of exhaust emissions harmful to the engine, specialists from SpaceX discovered the hidden possibilities of the methane plus oxygen fuel pair. We are talking about high efficiency, low cost, and the ability to extract fuel outside the Earth. This is an ingenious idea that will allow the production of fuel components on other planets. Now you understand why methane is an integral part of SpaceX's future. More than 30 Raptor engines will be used on the interplanetary system. When the Super Heavy launch vehicle is initiated, they will burn almost a thousand tons of methane. 
Considering that Elon Musk plans to build dozens of Starship systems, it is difficult to imagine how much fuel will be needed for their permanent operation. Now the company buys methane from third-party producers. This is quite enough for conducting tests with Starship prototypes, but a drop in the bucket compared to the volumes required in the future. Additionally, on March 3rd, the SN10 test vehicle made another flight, having successfully ascended to an altitude of 10 kilometers and landed in one piece. However, the landing was hard, and after a few minutes, the prototype exploded, or as they say at SpaceX, produced RUD. In general, the flight was recognized as successful and delighted the fans of the company with a spectacular spectacle. In January 2021, it became public that Musk plans to produce natural gas near the Boca Chica spaceport. This is proven by filings with the FAA and Texas state regulators. It is reported that gas will be supplied to the SpaceX spaceport area from at least five different wells. The purified methane is planned to be pumped into cooling tanks for storage and further use at Starship. However, the energy company Dallas Petroleum Group got in the way of Musk's global plans. Its representatives claim that they own wells in the same area. According to a subsidiary of SpaceX, which bought out the Lapita site with a total area of 326 hectares, DPG's only goal is to blackmail and receive money from the new owners of the gas field. More recently, Elon Musk announced the competition for the best technology that will capture carbon in the Earth's atmosphere. Carbon dioxide will be delivered to the storage facility, after which it will be converted into methane using electrolysis and the Sabatier reaction. Likewise, SpaceX is going to mine the substance on Mars. There is a huge amount of CO2 in its atmosphere, and there is a lot of water under the surface of the planet which makes it possible to obtain methane in city or on the spot from Latin. With recent tests of the Starship prototype, it is clear that SpaceX is actively moving towards a new system for interplanetary travel. At the moment, this is the most realistic scenario for the transformation of humanity into an interplanetary species. Methane production is one of the most important components of Elon Musk's plan to create an independent colony on the surface of Mars, and regular flights to other planets. While most people's attention is riveted on the spectacular tests of prototypes of the Starship spacecraft, equally important work is taking place in the shadows. It is methane that will most likely allow us to conquer the solar system and deep space. That is at least until humanity reaches a new breakthrough in the development of rocket engines. Do you think SpaceX will be able to realize its plans to extract methane on other planets? Please don't forget to share your opinion in the comments section below the video. Make sure to press the like button if you enjoyed it, as well as subscribe to the channel. This is Innovative Techs. See you soon. Take care.